What I want to do here is derive a differential equation solved by Chebyshev polynomials of the first kind and then do another one for Chebyshev polynomials of the second kind. And the way that I'm going to do it is I'm going to start by looking at a differential equation that we're already super familiar with. And that is, that is this one right here, that the second derivative with respect to theta of cosine of n theta is equal to what? It's equal to minus n squared cosine of n theta. Okay, great. This is something that you know we're, we're super familiar with. This is this is one of the most easy differential equations that we solve. So you know no, nothing mysterious is going on here. Um, and but now what I want to do, uh, the new thing I want to do is I want to uh, notice that the way that we define our Chebyshev polynomials is to say that cosine of n theta is equal to t sub n our Chebyshev polynomial of the first kind with as its argument cosine of theta. All right, so so what I want to do, so so this right here, this statement right here is equivalent to saying second derivative with respect to theta t sub n of cosine theta is equal to minus n squared times t sub n of theta. Okay. So, so this is fine. We've just restated, uh, just restated um, cosine theta. Just restated this guy up here. Um, but now, what I want to do is, is something different. I want to say, well, you know, Chebyshev polynomial of cosine theta. That's nice. But what happens when we look at just our Chebyshev polynomial of x? You know, or, or really, what I'm saying is that what happens when we look at the change of variables, cosine of theta equals x? What happens in that case? Um, and a few things happen. One is that we have to rework this derivative right here, and, and that's where the whole host of this thing changing is going to come from. So when we when we uh, use this change of variables, then what we have is that uh, dx can now be written in terms of d theta as uh, minus sine theta d theta, and then this sine theta right here we can re-express in terms of x from the fact that sine squared plus cosine squared equals one. And what we see is that it's going to be square root 1 minus x squared d theta plus dx. And the sign of this thing is going to be dependent, right? So, so this is a square root, so we should really have a plus or minus out in front. And so, I'm, so I'm writing that here. But, but the good news is that we'll actually only see this thing squared, so we won't need to worry about that plus and minus. But I'll, I'll come to that in a second. Um, so we have this. That's great. Now let's rewrite our differential equation using this right here, because what this tells us right here is that uh, d d theta, which is what we have currently right now, can be re-expressed as some plus minus one minus x squared d d x, right? Because we're we're basically just uh, saying let this d x or this d theta right here go to d x, and, and and when you do that, you get yeah you know, this guy right here. Uh, so let's plug that in over here and see what happens. So we plug that in. What we see is that we're going to have uh, we're going to have root one minus x squared d d x. That's our first. So so this is two applications of a derivative. So here's our first application. Uh, then we're going to have a second application. We're going to have root one minus x squared d d x acting on our Chebyshev polynomial, tn of x. This whole thing's going to be equal, be equal to minus n squared t sub n of x. And so the good news right here is that this weird plus minus shows up twice. So they cancel out and it's going to be plus 1. And then the last thing that we really need to do is just um, do a product rule right here on, on, on this function right here. Because yeah, when, we, when we applied this derivative twice, we end up getting this product rule because of the way that the derivative gets redefined when we change variables. So let's do this derivative right here. Uh, so what's going to happen? We're going to have still 1 minus x squared out in front. But uh, what's going to happen? We do our product rule. We're going to get what? We're going to have one term that looks like 1 minus x squared second derivative of our Chebyshev polynomial. And then we're going to have another term, uh, which comes from taking this derivative right here. And that's going to be what we're going to pull down. Pull down a 1 half, and then minus 2. So this is going to be minus x over root 1 minus x squared, 
all times d dx dn of x. And then this whole thing right here is equal to the same right hand side. Minus n squared t n of x. Okay, great. Now this right here we can simplify pretty easily. Um, this right here is going to combine with that just to be 1 minus x squared. It's going to cancel with that guy. And so multiply this whole thing out. And we're left with 1 minus x squared d squared tn of x dx squared minus x dtn of x dx equals minus n squared dn of x. And so we've done it. Uh, here we, we've derived a differential equation that is satisfied by our Chebyshev polynomial. And, and what I'll do just to make things a little nicer, you know, when, when you see a differential equation in the wild, it usually isn't written with the answer as your function. And so, so what, we, what we should look for in the wild is this. 1 minus x squared y double prime minus x y prime plus n squared y equal to zero. If we see this differential equation in the wild, then we know that the solution to it is our Chebyshev polynomial of the first kind. Now I'll, I'll box this guy up. Okay, great. Uh, we've done it for our Chebyshev polynomial of the first kind. Now let's do it again for our Chebyshev polynomial of the second kind. And I'll, and I'll do that on a new, new page. Uh, so what's the story here? Well, recall first that our Chebyshev polynomial of the second kind uh, is defined in this way. We say that u sub n of cosine theta, that's equal to sine of n plus 1 theta all over sine of theta, right? And so uh, what, what does that mean? That means we should probably look at a differential equation of the form uh, d d squared d theta squared sine of n plus 1 theta. What's this equal to? This is equal to minus n plus 1 squared sine of n plus 1 theta. Okay, um, now let's try and do the same thing that we did before, right? So before, uh, what, what was the first thing that we did? Well, we can just pl plug in our Chebyshev polynomial from this fact that we know right here. And so when we do that, what we get is that this stated derivative of, and now it's going to be sine theta times un of cosine theta, right? Because sine, sine n plus 1 theta is equal to the product of these two guys. This whole thing right here is equal to minus n plus 1 squared sine of m plus 1 theta. Okay, great. Um, now, now what? Now let's do the same thing as before. Um, let's use a change of variables given by cosine theta equals x. So we'll have our un of x right here. And if we do that, what did we see before? We saw that our derivative dd theta became, became some weird plus minus 1 minus x squared d d x perfect and so we can rewrite this whole thing in terms of x now like this uh, we can rewrite it as well, well actually this guy right here i should um i should right because we we, we want to rewrite this in terms of our chebyshev polynomials and so this right hand term right here should be written as one second. Should be written as u sub n of cosine theta sine theta. There we go. Uh, boom. Okay, perfect. Great, great. Um, now what? Now let's yeah. Now now let's plug in for x. So we're gonna have some weird plus minus root one minus x squared d d x times same thing root one minus x squared d d x all acting on what we're gonna have some sine theta here which is going to be again some some plus minus one minus x squared u n of x 
whole thing equal to minus n plus one squared un of x, then sine of theta right here, which is also, uh, we, can, we can write it again as plus minus one minus x squared. And the good news, the good news is that uh, we have this weird sine theta being written as you know, plus minus root one minus x squared four times. So we have it here, 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 and here. And so that's great because that means that uh, we can, well, first off, we can cancel these two right here. And then also uh, these two plus or minuses right here get squared to one, so we don't have to think about either of those. And so that's awesome. Um, that, that'll make things a bit easier for us. But okay, uh, we're at this stage right now. The last thing to do is just to try and you know, multiply everything out. And it's gonna be a little rough because we have a whole bunch of product rules to do, but let's, uh, let's work through it step by step. So we're gonna have uh, this guy right here and then let's do this product rule right here. Um, so what are we gonna get? We're going to get, well, one term is gonna be root one minus x squared du n of x dx. Then the other term is gonna be what? Well, we're gonna have one half and then minus two. So we're gonna have minus x over root one minus x squared u n of x. Okay. And, and I'll, and I'll yeah, equal to the same guy right here. Okay, um, this simplifies a little bit, right? Because this is going to combine to be, uh, it's gonna to combine to be uh, one minus x squared. So that's good. And then right over here, it's gonna cancel out with this guy right here. And so this whole thing simplifies to ddx of one minus x squared dun of x dx minus x u n of x, and that's equal to uh, this guy up here. Um, okay, great. Now let's actually do this product uh, product rule again, or really we're gonna have to do two product rules. So uh, what are we gonna get in that case? Well, let's start with here. So if we take a derivative of this guy right here, we're gonna get, get what? We're gonna get minus two x du n of x dx. Then on the second term, we're gonna get plus one minus x squared d squared u n of x dx. Then do it on this guy right here, we're gonna get minus u n of x, and then minus, uh, minus x d u n of x dx. All right, so whole bunch of stuff going on here. Uh, let's start combining things. So we're gonna have, what we're gonna have this one minus x squared d squared u n of x dx. So we have that term right here. Um, we also have these two derivative or these two terms with a first derivative of our polynomial. So we're gonna have minus three x d u n of x dx. Um, and then what do we have? Well, we have we have this extra minus u n of x here. But then up here, what do we have? On, on the right hand side, we also have minus n squared minus two n minus u n of x. So this term right here actually cancels with one of the terms we get from expanding this guy right here. Uh, so, so, um, so right, so, so this term right here is the same as, expand this guy out, we have minus n squared minus two n, then the term that cancels times u n of x. So here we've got another differential equation, um, in this case satisfied by our Chebyshev polynomial of the second kind. And again, I'll rewrite this in terms of, uh, in terms of y, because that, that's the type of thing we would actually see, uh, you know, if we were just working on some problem and this differential equa equation showed up. And so our, our new differential equation is uh, one minus x squared times y double prime minus three x y prime plus n times n plus two y equals zero. That's our, that's our brand new differential equation. And so we've done it. So starting with some intuitive thing that we knew, you know, we, we, we knew from the get-go that our Chebyshev polynomials behaved like sines and cosines or, or sine of n theta and, and cosine of n theta, maybe with an extra factor. Um, starting with just that and knowing the differential equations that they solve, uh, we were able to work through a change of variables and get a brand new set of uh, differential equations 
that are solved by our Chebyshev polynomials. Uh, so I think I will stop there.